Welcome back. We're probably going to enact a plan pretty soon in order to get some information out of Farina as to what's going on with the prophecy in hopes of, you know, avoiding the prophecy happening because a lot of people would die or transform or dissolve or something. Has been happening. Those meetings sure did make me hungry. Still need to get some cake. I did get the cup of tea in between the parts, by the way. It's sitting to my left right now. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Paimon didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Also, the quest um, information for the current quest we're on does say that we're going to meet a friend. And I'm wondering who the friend could be. Probably Mona again. Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremenay was now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Do you feel more confident after the meetings, Paimon? Uh, well... It's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great. After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh... Huh? Uh, is something wrong? Who did you spot? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! I mean, yeah, I got, I got some in between the parts. I, I did say I was going to do that, Paimon. Did you not notice? Uh, then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Okay. <gasps> Who's that voice? Uh, but there's no one here! Ah, oh, have you forgotten me already? Who are you? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru! No memory of you. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. So, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Who are you? What do you want with us, and where's my cup of tea? Hmm. Consider me a passerby, just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple. On a whim. Friend's disciple? So this is one of the friends of Mona's master. The enigmatic N of the Hexen Zirkel. Um, will Fontaine's prophecy come true? The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesied will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? There it is again, fate. The choice of Steinsgate. Can there really be no exceptions? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the god's gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? What? Well, what is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but it also sounds kind of scary. The tea in the teacup is just about gone as well. Mine hasn't. Mine's still cooling down. It's still warm. Jeez. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. And when I say warm, I mean I touch the side of the cup, it burns. So, you know, it's still quite hot. Yeah. Ultimately... Fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. 
All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm. This was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice. It's gone. Be funny if she was like, no, no, I'm still here. Okay. And then leaves. Major N. Is this the clue you're leaving for us? The unexpected nudes leads to complicated feelings. We go to sleep when we wake up. Someone seems to be outside. Oh, what? I want to hear someone talking. That's me. I'm doing the commentary. Oh, all right, all right, coming. You're getting more diligent, Paimon. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? What? Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Luna! How have you been these past few days? Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. In what way? Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist? I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but how can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Ah, uh, actually, someone already came over. Didn't even offer us a cup of tea, though. Terrible. Huh? You tell Mona about N. Goodness gracious. Are you serious? Yep, yeah, very. Didn't offer a cup of tea at all. So rude. I believe she came to pass a message to us. She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa, the Hexen Zirkle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. True, her words were meant as a helpful hint, but when will we realize their value and meaning? Was that the best answer to my question that I could have gotten? Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? Yeah, and we didn't get a cup of tea, you know, that would cheer me up a little bit at this point. I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. 
If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. Don't worry about it, Mona. And thank you. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Yes, coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler. Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. Is there? I mean, I know there is for me, which is up here. I like going backwards and forwards. As I've said previously, like, wandering around here. Not there. Wandering around here, backwards and forwards. I do like to do that. I do like to do that. And it is just a little bit further down. Enjoying your day? Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Hello! The end is near! Ah, it's a good day. It's a good day. Huh? Our names are written in this newspaper. Uh, what's going on? Maybe we're famous. Let Paimon see! The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blonde adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, the Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her! She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? That sure seems to be the case. Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. <laughs> I did like the this time. Alright, so, yep, let's carry on up there. I mean, you know what? Let's use the waypoint. No, not that. No. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat? Potentially. There's no one here. Oh. Hey, quick. Look. That's... That's the limited edition only 16 slices a day cake. It hasn't already sold out for the day? It was so delicious the last time we tried it. Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. We can't let anyone else get ahead of us. One slice of cake, please. Ah, someone showed up after all. Oh, wait, you're the one from the Palais Mermonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait, did he really say something like that? I imagine so. That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. I mean, one of those is just impossible. You must be lying. Do you come here often? Mm -hmm. Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Yeah. Uh, then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon, and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. 
You know, like in the prophecy. Or maybe they won't. You never know. The end is near. Oh, the prophecy. Um, to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Fair point. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I like her. Apart from the coffee bit. And there she goes. All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. I mean, you didn't say that a second ago anyway. You share a glance with Paimon and snuff down the cake. It's more delicious than last time. And the flavor gets even better with the sip of tea. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. Ah, oh, well. End of the world and stuff. End of the world. All right, let's get out of here. The end times are here! Oh! We're near the Seabird office! Let's go look for Charlotte and have a chat! A chat, you say? Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Ha! You've got some nerve! You just used us to make some quick mora! Can we negotiate a profit split? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Yeah, oh. We get some money out of this? Oh, oh, all right, then. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. <laughs> oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. D mm -hmm. Are you sure? Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary Traveler and Paimon? Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Do we get more money for this? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. You seriously want to interview me? Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Oh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... Oh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Yes. Later. Wait, Charlotte. Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Huh. That's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but... I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. 
Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they'd do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. Assuming anybody would be left alive to read it, but you know. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. Ah, I see. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job. And I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Yeah, just imagine if the end was coming tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? Which one? The Primordial? Oh, it's the same one near enough, isn't it? Soon, anyway. The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Hmm. Paimon's been thinking. Yes? If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? Try and stop it. That's what we'd do. What we'd always do, right? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? If I could choose, huh? Hmm. Just like Charlotte said, suddenly trying to consider what to do is pointless. We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. Until the moment comes, I think I'll just keep journeying on. Hopefully try and find a way to escape this universe and travel to another one. I've done it before. You mean, still traveling? Yes. Cherish every single moment that I have to look upon this world. Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? Exactly. The banter goes back and forth between the two of you as time slips by. As night falls, you return to your accommodations and end this busy day. The next few days are just as calm. The end didn't come and Charlotte comes to find you and conduct the interview in the Spina di Rezula safe house at the Fluver Sandre. Oh. Navia, having finished her business in Poisson, even drops by to take a photo with the two of you. All goes well. For now. Ah, feels like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. I mean, it is a sewer, so. But it's still better than the Fortress of Miripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervillat sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. Ah, uh, so are you under the impression that we might be wanted criminals at all? We didn't steal that cake he gave it to us. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Did something happen? Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A, a riot? Oh. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her, loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. 
And before she could respond, others started to join in. The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her, but we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? I think there's more going on with Farina than we're led to believe at this point. There's been some strangeness. I've had my theories in the past, you know. But I understand the situation. Good. Monsieur Nervilad sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. <laughs> well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. You sure caught on quickly. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. Yeah, loud and dramatic really does sum that up, doesn't it? When Nervalet was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? I guess. Uh, it looks like those detective novels have had an effect on you. In that case, there's not a moment to lose. Poisson, here we come! Oh, very well. Well, Poisson, here we come in the next part. We'll try and find Farina. Oh, there she is. She's not in Poisson. She's right here. Do they know? Probably not. Probably not. Anyway, we'll see you in the next part. Ta-da for now. Machine.